<clears throat> this is Enki. Continuing the topic about 2012 because this reality is fixed according to time and you only have 10 minutes and we do only one interview a day, each one of us. We don't do the continuing into the next interview thing. One a day is sufficient and so here I am, 2012. <clears throat> to place into perspective for those who then get it. What does 2012 represent? Now, what I'm giving to you here is a self honest transcendence point. 2012, you're all together, one and equal, creating. You're all one and equal, manifesting. Congratulations, I mean, it's one thing that you've got to create together. Unfortunately, it's an illusion, it's an idea, it's a belief. It's something new, I must say. Well done. It's something unique. It's not something that we particularly programmed within you, within the human mind, within the human reality. And what does 2012 represent? Human beings, beliefs, human beings perceptions, human beings, ideas. 2012. Initially, it started off with a fear of the mind. <coughs> <coughs> Because the mind can assess timelines, and the mind's integration into the physical has gotten to such an extent that it cannot sustain itself in its reality, in its creation for as long as it previously could. Understand there exists only one mind divided into each human being. And this one mind has been noticing for a while that its resources are growing thin. Its integration into the physical and its essence of which it exists of the physical is depleted. So a fear man human beings have got a problem. Because the mind in itself experienced fear. You are a being within the mind that exists as fear. Hmm. 
you've got a living, manifested entity existing within you, experiencing the exact same as what you're experiencing. Yet, you deny the mind. Fascinating. When the mind is one and equal as you. Continuing on the point of 2012. So the mind went into fear reaction, which of course you believed was you. You experienced that fear. And now, for some very strange reason, you actually believe and think that the end of the world or something miraculous or something destructive is going to happen in 2012, which is the most bizarre thought that can exist. Which is the same as death, really, the same as the fear of death. Bizarre, really. Because you don't die. So 2012 is a really boring topic. I don't particularly like wasting my time with an interview to talk about it. <clears throat> but here I am, giving direction to a point that I suppose you yourself don't even know why the fuck you believe it in the first place. Why are you taking such a point into consideration? I mean, do you have any control over your future? Do you have any control over what's going to happen in the next moment? What's going to happen the next day? What's going to happen the next week? What's going to happen the next month? You don't know. I'd say, rather be concerned what's going to happen the next moment, the next day, the next week, or the next month. Why 2012? You know, you possibly could even die before then. Then you would go, but, you know, why did I worry about 2012 when I died before it anyway? point I'm making is live in the moment. I mean, what else is there to do? Otherwise, 2012 will be the greatest disappointment ever known to man. It's an illusion, it's an idea, it's a perception, I'll be straightforward. All that will happen, that's always happened, that's always been here, is that the reality, this world in which you exist and experience yourself will just become worse. But that's always happened, that's always been here, it's the way it's been, always. So nothing's particularly changed, I don't know what the fuss is about. Stop fussing. I'd suggest start living, in the moment. Who knows really, maybe you do die in the next moment, the next day the next week, the next month. 